but I have two very eminent panelists on either side. Uh, they've been introduced, so I won't waste time. Basically, the way we'll run it is opening remarks, disagreement, agreement of any questions from the audience, and then go home. Uh, I mean, we'll go home. I think the, the larger issue that we're discussing today is, has democracy become a crutch for apathy, for lethargy, for postponement of policy decisions, for not doing what we need to do? I'm tired of this odious comparison with China where we say, but China is doing well because they're, a democ uh, they're not a democracy. It's a perverse argument because if you ask people who are really poor, downtrodden, denied, every single opportunity their way. For them, democracy means nothing either. My contention is, and it was said famously, I can't remember if it, was, if it was Bertrand Russell or someone else, with forms of government, let fools contest that which is governed best is best. We're not here, I believe, making us a case for the emergency, even though many uh, people in the audience follow modern day Gandhi. We're not making a case that India needs to turn into a dictatorship. But I think both these panelists should attempt to examine the contours of our democracy today, what it stands for, and where it needs to go beyond the electoral process that happens once in every five years. Because that alone can't be the birthmark of democracy. So I would request Dr. Qureshi to open the session, after which uh, Shopun will, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you, Suhel, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, topic sounds like a topic of a debate where you have to argue for or against the motion. But I am reminded of, a, of an officer who was appearing for IS examination. And in the interview, she was asked to say, to speak for three minutes, arguing that omelette is better than fried egg. She asked for a minute, she thought, organized a thought, and she spoke brilliantly. Then the, the member of the UPSC said that in the IAS you are supposed to examine both sides uh, of the picture and now argue the other way that omelette is better than fried egg. She asked for another minute and she argued brilliantly again. My answer to this, today's question also is going to be more in this line, that I'll analyze both sides instead of taking a position, because uh, the, I'm sure the, there will be more clarity when my other two panelists speak. Where India, the USP worldwide, I think, is democracy. Wherever you go the, in the world, if people know two things about India, one, it's a large country, and it, it is democracy. How big is this democracy is uh, something uh, which not many people know. We are the largest, but how large? We, with 75 crore uh, voters, we have more voters than all 50 countries of Europe put together plus all 40 countries of North America put together, 90 countries rolled into one, and we have the diversity which we have to manage, all kinds of diversity which has been discussed in the last two or three sessions, ethnic, linguistic, cultural, religious, and what have you. Despite that, our faith is maybe poor country has uh, created a model which is uh, appreciated worldwide. By lunchtime, the nation knows the result. You, there are uh, the, the cases when people have lost by one vote and have accepted the verdict of the people with folded hands. The living example is now in the Union Cabinet, Mr. C.P. Joshi. He could have been Chief Minister of Rajasthan if he had won. He lost by one vote and accepted the verdict. Later on, he contested Lok Sabha and he is now a member of parliament. We see that uh, uh, in the election, the people's participation is generally moderate in the Lok Sabha election. It has been averaged about 60% for the last 62 years. But as you go lower down, it becomes uh, very, very hot. Uh, the, the Vidhan Sabha election has better turnout, and Panchayati Raj elections definitely have very, very high turnout, and the, the uh, elections are fought with uh, great uh, vigor. Why? People, why are people interested in the uh, democracy? Because the elections um, are an opportunity when people hold the governance accountable. 
they ask about uh, they talk about their uh, expectations on development health employment and corruption and that's why they uh, participate now the question are uh, is uh, the democracy leading to regression again my answer here is yes and no in many ways yes but in many ways no but first uh, i would say why probably we are not uh, regressing we have seen a lot of progress in the last 60 years let's compare ourselves with our neighbors we were the same people got free at the same time and where are we and where are they probably democracy made the difference from 14% literacy in 1947 we are now more than 75 life expectancy has doubled nutrition imr and agriculture irrigation power you uh, name it everywhere we have made substantial progress it may not be enough but we surely have made substantial progress now on the at the time of election each party tries to outdo rivals in making promises attractive programs are announced there are programs for minorities scheduled castes scheduled tribes then yes you have seen there is a competition of manifestos free television free the for a pressure cooker free the this free that there is a lot of debate whether this is a very uh, unhealthy competition or is it all right my personal view uh, which i uh, resisted uh, voicing earlier but maybe i can now is i see frankly no harm after all with the standard of living that we are talking about all the progress and the, the divide between the, the the two indias that we have been talking about particularly in the last two sessions what will it lead to improved standard of living as the, the evident from the quality of life you will have a tv you will have fridge you will have all the amenities of life if uh, some uh, party promises the tv can delivers what's wrong i'm reminded of rajiv gandhi's famous statement that when you the uh, the they give one rupee uh, only 15 paise to reach the people where do 85 paise go at least in this case when you promise a tv it is not the shell which goes to the people the whole tv at least reaches the people the the money which uh, the, uh, the uh, which would have helped them to buy these things uh, at least these uh, products are being delivered to them probably there is a, a merit in uh, what's happening distribution of bicycle laptop i think they are all uh, quite positive things to talk about now the other th the other side which is probably more serious we are also going down democracy is also proving counterproductive casteism somebody the farashar was talking about the social structure i like, i can assure you casteism has increased because of democracy people who did not know their caste now know their sub 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 caste you know about your gotra you know about your khap these were the terms which were not really known so much as they are now because these are the kind of vote banks which are uh, encouraged similarly there is communal polarization it has reached a dangerous proportion ethnic divide entire northeast every tribe is fighting against the other years and when we were managing the elections in those states we knew how serious the problems were in the vote bank vote bank politics i find it very funny that what is the definition of vote bank we see the total double standard the standard reply would be my voters are genuine voters your voters are your vote bank and the other fellow will say the same thing but the fact is that there are vote banks of various kinds which are being encouraged by the, the political system democracy in corruption we are again going down every election is contested in the name of fighting corruption you know recall every election and what happened i would not like to comment because uh, sohel will have make a more powerful statement on that then the next election i win again we fought on corruption my own uh, what i have been saying publicly is that election has become the biggest source of corruption in the country why because crores are, uh, of rupees are spent there is a legal ceiling of 40 lakhs for lok sabha and 16 lakhs for uh, vidhan sabha but anecdotally we know politicians in the private conversation tell us and dare us uh, to cash them they say 5 to 10 crores are spent on every election even vidhan sabha election now if you spend 10 crores for an election 
how, how will, where, where does the money come from? And how will you make up uh, uh, for it? The first thing that a minister does is to call his officers. And he says, I have invested 10 crores. You start paying me half star monthly. Because I have to repay. That is when the nexus between politician and bureaucracy begins. And the corruption, the vicious cycle of corruption starts. Criminality. 60 years ago, criminals could not uh, think of uh, winning elections. Now, probably the, the, they are uh, put up by all parties because, in the, because of the concept of winnability. They must win an election, and they feel uh, they may be a criminal or a toughie, and uh, th th those kind of people. I don't want to use uh, strong adjectives. I'm leaving them for Suhel again. But uh, these, these are the guys who are giving tickets, and they even win. Then, um, what, what is the, the way out? We, the, this is a paradox that uh, although the elections are fought in the name of good governance, but what is happening is uh, just the opposite, and we need to do something about it. You, you might ask, then, what is the government doing? What is the election commission doing? We, the, uh, of course, there are laws which prohibit use of caste and religion in, in election. We cannot intimidate uh, scheduled class and scheduled tribes. We take a lot of uh, preventive measures. We uh, have devised a system of uh, vulnerability mapping. Every village, we identify 10, 15, 20 gundas who can threaten uh, a fair election and uh, take care of them beforehand. We try to ensure transparency and neutrality. Interestingly, this biggest election exercise which I've mentioned is conducted by bureaucracy. India is one rare country where the entire uh, exercise is done by bureaucracy. 11 million people conducted the last general election with zero error. This is an interesting paradox. The same bureaucracy, which is considered lazy, corrupt, and inefficient, when it comes under the election commission, they deliver a perfect election. In fact, I, uh, you'll be f familiar with the heading which you see in the newspapers. In the last election in Punjab, let EC Raj continue. Uh, because all that we do is enforce laws, existing laws, nothing else. But why is it that we can't enforce those laws in the uh, other time? In any case, our Raj is 30 days, 30 to 40 days. But then we are able to ensure uh, the laws uh, which promote uh, the good environment. We, uh, you can't deface your property. You can't put up posters. You can, there can't, can't be any noise. We try and ensure a very... Um, uh, peaceful and uh, uh, healthy environment for election. We uh, try to seize money. We have set up an expenditure monitoring division. We see 73 crores in Tamil Nadu and other elections, 53 crores in UP and other elections. But despite that, although for every crore that we seized, I'm sure that we would have stopped at least 20 crores from flowing. But still, a lot of money they reaches. They invent new, new uh, modus operandi. Now the money starts changing hands much before election, months and year, maybe years before election. In various ways, we are making a checklist of uh, the way the, uh, you can uh, cheat in election. And uh, the secret will be that we have to be ahead of the crime, but which uh, never happens. Finally, I would say that uh, uh, if we want to, from the biggest democracy, we want to become the greatest democracy, we have to introspect and do something. Electoral reforms, which we have been suggesting for a good 15 to 20 years, they need to be the, taken up uh, without uh, further.